Welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, with no games to talk about, we're just manufacturing content. And today, we're pretty much putting Andrew Barry on the hot seat. We're looking at all the moves he made in the offseason leading up to last year. We just went through all the free agent signings. Mike, we're going to do the trades that he made. And I think he made three trades. And you're going to show yep. the player we got and the assets we gave up. And then we'll give our grades. Who do we start with? Let's start with Zadarius Smith. Now, I forgot when this trade went down. The Browns actually got a sixth and a seventh round pick in next year's draft, along with Zadarius Smith. But they traded a 2024 fifth and a 2025 fifth. So two fifths for Zadarius Smith, a sixth and a seventh. Grade the trade. I mean, it's a C. That's uh, yep, right? yep. It's, yep. He didn't. He had a. He was okay. He was disappointing. They didn't give up a. In ton. the end, you gave up fifth round picks for a sixth and a seventh to get him. That's fine. It's totally in mid. It was a money dump by Minnesota. Yeah. Did the Browns get full value out of that? Probably not on the contractual side. But, but it wasn't like he was terrible. Right. So, Given how yeah. little he gave up for it, I still think there's a chance he comes back. Maybe yeah. I'm totally off on that. I haven't talked to anyone. Yeah. But just because of, there, it is still a position to need. I yeah. just wonder if they can get something done. You know, I talked to Mary Kay, and, sh and she said that they, she thought that they should bring him back. I'll give it a C plus, um, just because the, uh, of, of the Minimoski picks they gave up. I mean, it's a fifth. What do you mean? They, you know, you can't buy no uh, bag of peanuts with a fifth round pick. He did a, a solid job. I thought he was a good locker room dude. Um, but we didn't really see the production, especially the way I was ranting and raving about it. I thought this was going to be a tandem that Miles Garrett was actually going to get somebody that played up to the double-digit sacks on the other side. Didn't happen. I'll give it a C plus. He, he was a decently uh, productive guy, decent locker room guy. Well, I'm building the reputation as the professor that no students want to take my class. Mm -hmm. No curve for you? No. I'm, I'm a little more harsh. It's a C minus. I agree. The assets were pretty much a wash. Mm -hmm. But I when this trade was was announced I was really excited Super. because he was a name player but Bull dug into his last year in Minnesota and told all of us at the time guys his production really waned at the halfway point of the season yeah. I didn't follow him closely enough there to know that mm. you looked into it and you were absolutely right um, I will be shocked if he comes I don't want to say shocked it would be a surprise to me if he comes back he doesn't I feel like a starter anymore like no. he's a rotational player yeah now. and and because Jim Schwartz had so much success with rotating guys in, and they yeah. all looked good. I think he's going to try to upgrade at that particular spot. I think spot. they should. Next trade was Elijah Moore, and this was a pick swap as well because the Browns mm -hmm. got Elijah Moore and the 74th pick from the Jets. The Jets received the Browns' second-round pick at number 42. So a pick swap and Elijah Moore. G. Bush, start us off. How do you grade this trade? Uh, this, this is tough for me. Uh, I'm going to get this a C-. minus. Not because of what the picks they gave up. It's just simple fact that you're looking at the production that we thought we were going to get. This guy was talked about as if he was going to be not a, just a number two. This could be a 1B type guy uh, to Amari Cooper. Um, you look at his production. We didn't see the playbook. They had him in the backfield. They sold us on him being a Percy Harvin type, running the ball in reverses. We saw a couple of reserve reverses, and that was it. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give it a, a, a C minus for me, guys. It's a D plus for me. Yeah. It, for what he was billed to be and what they got, they could. I feel like they could have got better value had they just stayed at 42, and drafted a receiver. Mm -hmm. So, he's a jag to me. He's just a guy. This is an F. This is a terrible trade. Yeah. Because first of all. So the trade ends up being Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman. Now, we'll never know who the Browns would have taken if they would have stayed there, but they could have gotten Jalen Reed or Tank Dell. Those guys had major impact as rookies. Tank Dell was a star. If Tank Dell hadn't gotten hurt, he probably would have been in the Pro Bowl as a rookie. I mean, that's how good he was. So if you had, I mean, if, now again, we don't know that he would have taken him, but he was available. If I told you right now, you could trade Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman for Tank Dell, oh, I Everybody mean, sign up. me up. Yep. My yep. God. And even Jalen Reed, who was good for Green Bay, I'd still take him over those two guys combined. Me, it's an F. Yeah, it's an F for me, too. I had big expectations. And again, it goes back to what I've been saying on the YouTube show for a while now. Whatever criterion the Browns are prioritizing in selecting wide receivers, be it the draft or trade, with the exception of Amari Cooper, who was already a proven and known commodity, the guys that they're speculating on to become stars, Crazy. they have a terrible batting average on those, and it's an F for me. All right, let's go to one from an F 
if anyone doesn't give this an A, I'll be shocked. But Dustin Hopkins for a 2025 seventh round pick. A plus a. plus. A. Yeah, A plus. A plus. Yeah. This is easy. That, yeah. That's the easiest no one debate. we've had so far. No debate. I mean, and that was honestly, like, I know that Flacco was a huge, like, lottery ticket that you didn't expect to hit on. And I would say even Kareem Hunt lived up to exceeded expectations for me anyhow. But this guy is right there with Flacco yeah, in terms great. of what we got out of him and what we expected. Yep. Good job out of the Browns. Easy money. That gives us a little more time to talk about the draft after the break. Today, though, 5 o'clock, the Ultimate Cavs Show makes its debut. Make sure you tune in on our YouTube channel. Jay, you want to take us to break? I do, but I want to punch that a little bit stronger. If you're a Cavaliers fan, you will not only want to watch the inaugural episode of the Ultimate uh, Cleveland Cavs Show, you're going to become a regular viewer. Jason and McNuggets as a team are going to knock this show out of the park.